Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about one of the jigs that I've been seeing all over social media lately and it's this tiny little finesse jig for smallmouth bass. Uh, it's been a game changer for a lot of people. They've been catching giant bags of fish on it, especially the St. Lawrence River. I fished up there a tournament this year. All of the top 10 fished a bait actually exactly or very similar to this guy right here. Um, so I saw this picture on social media again and I've been doing some fall smallmouth fishing and I'm like, I need to try that bait. So fortunately I had the mold. If you'd like to see how to make this jig, leave a comment down below. I'll go ahead and make a video on that. I know you guys are waiting on some tackle making videos. I'm trying to plan them all out over the winter here because I can still fish right now. So I'll do the tackle making in the winter because that's when I do it. So uh, I had the mold, I made this jig. It's literally a quarter ounce football jig with some skirting material on it. And then this is a Great Lakes finesse snack craw. This whole thing is like two, two and a half inches long and it looks just like a tiny little crayfish. So we're gonna put it to the test today and see if we can catch us a couple fish on it. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. We're gonna break down everything rod reel line set up, how to fish it, where to fish it. Hopefully we'll catch some big smallmouth along the way. All right, so let's break down this jig that we're gonna be fishing in today's video. Um, I did mention that I built this jig myself. If you want to see that tackle making video, uh, let me know down in the comments below. I know you guys have been asking for the spinnerbait one. I didn't think that that would be a very popular video. I've tried doing some tackle making stuff in the past um, and it hasn't been something that really hit home. But if you guys wanna see more tackle making stuff, uh, let me know. The spinnerbait video will be coming. Um, I'm still fishing right now, so I don't do my tackle making during the year. I do it once like January, February hits and everything's frozen. Then I can spend time in the shop making baits and getting ready for the next year. So the spinnerbait one will be coming soon. If you'd like to see how to make this jig too, let me know and I can make that in there as well. Um, but I, what I did is I basically took a football head jig mold that is meant for four or five aught hooks and I put a one-aught hook in it, so it's a very small jig. Molded it without the weed guard, filed everything down, and I saw, like I mentioned, I saw this jig on social media on the Great Lakes Finesse website, so they had like a matted finish and a living rubber jig and then like a, um, little, their craw on the back. So I did matte powder paint and made it like a more natural head on there, baked that on there so it wouldn't chip off, and then I wrapped living rubber on there and did the spider cut with the short skirt. So it's a very small compact jig. And I put that two inch trailer on it and the whole jig only comes in at like two and a half inches long. It's a very, very tiny jig, uh, but you can drag it on the bottom just fine. And it comes over rocks great because of that football head jig design. So that's what that jig is. It's a quarter ounce. Um, I also poured some in a three eighths as well. If you want to see that video, let me know. Um, but I did them all in just green pumpkin because that's what I fish this time of year. And I figured that would be the easiest way for me to just try the bait to see if it works and get a feel for it on um, how effective the bait is. So that's the jig. The other thing is your rod and reel setup. So while it is a jig, and I actually learned this later in today's video that you can't fish it on jig gear, which I didn't fish it on jig gear, but I set the hook like I was fishing a, a flipping jig and literally snapped off a, a pretty big small mouth doing that. Um, the jig rod that I actually used for this was my Senko dock skipping rod that I use, which is actually a spinning rod. So it's the Cashin Icon. It's a 7.2 medium heavy, and I have 25, a 2500 Shimano Sedona on it with 15 pound test braid, and I put like a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader on it. So it worked perfect as like a little finesse jig rod. Uh, basically treat this thing like a Ned rig. It's just a Ned rig with a different profile. Um, to get you a little bit more bigger bites, hopefully, or just give them something different to look at. It, you won't be able to put this on even a seven foot medium heavy and 15 pound test fluorocarbon and throw it out there. Like the hook is just too small. The bait is too small. Uh, it just won't work. So I was actually fishing mine on a spinning rod, like a power finesse spinning rod, has the backbone you need to actually set the hook. Uh, but since there is no weed guard, you can just set the hook gently and lean into them and, and it'll keep those fish pinned and on the way back to the boat. So that's the setup. Let's head out on the water 
fish this thing around, see if we can catch a couple of fish on it and determine if this is a bait that I should be using in the future um, and trying to catch some even more smallmouth with it. All right, so now that we talked about the setup, everything you need to know about this bait, let's put this little dude to the test and see if we can catch us some big old smallies on it. I'm gonna start by making some farther casts because I have been getting some bites out there as well. I'm fishing this like current break right here that drops off of a point and you can see the big seam coming down the bend here. And with as much current as we have, it's more than we've usually had these past few days out here or fat past few weeks. So I'm thinking they're gonna stack up in this little seam rather than sit where they've been sitting recently, which is more like main river stuff. And all I'm gonna do is really drag this thing along the rocks and see if I can get one to get it. I know the water temperature is like 42, 43 degrees. So it's really, really cold. So I'm gonna keep this thing on the bottom the best I can and just slowly drag this thing along the bottom and see if I can get one to grab it. Um, just hopping it around the rocks and trying to keep it in those current breaks and keep it in front of a fish. The water is a little dirty today, so I might have to go to a little bit brighter color, which I don't know if I really have. I tend to tied most of these in green pumpkin. Hang on, we got one. Oh, I broke them off. That was way too hard of a hook set. Way too hard of a hook set for that bait. Oh, I had one on the first cast with it. Okay, let's retie. Please hold. All right, we're back in business here. The thing that I'm gonna have to adjust for, I'm actually gonna throw a short cast just because I know that there's some fish sitting right here. It seems like they're sitting off the back end of this point, so I'm just gonna try and put it right in front of them. The thing that I'm gonna have to adjust for is setting the hook. So when I think jig, I'm thinking like four-aught flipping hook, whacking them as hard as I can and flipping them in the boat on 20 pound test. That is not what this jig is. It is almost a Ned rig. It's pretty much a Ned rig, just a little bit bigger profile. It gives your bait a little bit different look. So I mean, I have to treat it as such. And when you fish with a Ned rig, you don't jig hook set like that. You literally just kind of reel up and lean into them. So that's what I'm gonna have to adjust for and try and make the right hook set so I don't snap the next one off. I'm literally fishing this on like 10 pound test fluorocarbon. So that was way too hard of a hook set. There was one right there, I think. I, I did not need to do that whatsoever. So live and learn, that's one jig gone. But let's throw it back out there and see if we can get another one to bite it. They seem to like it. So if they like it, maybe we'll get a couple more bites. I think the key with this jig is just that it's a bigger profile. So it's gonna get you some bigger bites, hopefully. Um, we'll see how that goes. But that's ultimately, I think, why guys were fishing that on the St. Lawrence River. They make theirs look like a goby. I'm making mine look like a crawfish with the crawfish trailer. You basically just interchange your trailer. All it is is a fat-headed bait with a skinnier tail. So for me, I'm fishing a river that's full of crawfish and has no gobies. So I'm putting that crawfish trailer on there and trying to imitate the crawfish. But if I were fishing the St. Lawrence River, those guys were just using Ned Rig trailers and it would make it look like it had the skinny tail and the fat head. Um, at least that's my understanding of what you do with this bait. Hopefully that doesn't happen too much because I don't have a million of these. Ah, that's the only problem. That's the other thing. These don't have weed guards on them, at least the ones that I've seen. I'm sure you could get ones with weed guards, but I did not put weed guards on mine because I want to fish it like a Ned Rig. So there goes number two, but we'll keep trying here. Let's try and get it over in the current break more over there. You get bit on my first cast and then a snag and two fishless casts. Although I don't expect it to be like fast and furious, but first cast, usually you're onto something. Oh, there was a bite right there. There we go. You can see I just reeled into that one and got a better hook set on him. So let's get him up here and see what we got. He doesn't feel very big. That's because he's not very big. So, so much for the bigger bite thing. He's a little baby, but that doesn't mean there's not a big one down there with him. So that's the first one on that little jig right there. Not a bad fish, but we're looking for much bigger. So let's throw him back, get that little dude back out there and see if we can catch us another one. I was reeling or I was pulling along the bottom and I literally felt my line just pump and go slack. So I felt him pick it up and swim downstream with it. That was pretty cool. The guys that were fishing this up on the St. Lawrence River, they were mostly just getting on these current seams like this and then drifting and just letting the bait kind of bounce along the bottom as they were drifting back. This river, not that much current. Like the St. Lawrence, 
for anybody that's never been there, I can't describe to you how much current is actually in that system. Um, you literally cannot go forward on a trolling motor or almost hold your place sometimes. So that, you basically drop your bait on a seam. Oh, that was a bite right there. Uh, you drop your bait down on a current seam and then you just kind of drift back with it. So they were just kind of dragging it on the bottom real slow. I'm trying to mimic that by doing what I'm doing here and just letting it bounce through the current. But obviously I'm not gonna get it perfect because I don't have the same kind of current, but I could see this bait working in more places than just the St. Lawrence River. Um, I actually, after that first fish and the way it's reacting here, I could see it playing really well on Lake Erie, probably more than where I'm at today. I know that they feed on mostly minnows here there is crawfish in the river, but they feed on a lot of like minnows in this river. So they're not mostly keying on crawfish. And I know a lot of times they like some reactionary baits a little bit more, but I've fished on Lake Erie and I know how much they love goby up there. And like that, I, that was one place that does have goby. So I could see if you put a Ned Rig trailer on this, the way that they were fishing it on the St. Lawrence, it could be a super effective bait up on Lake Erie. And I will be giving it a try next spring once I get up there. Ah, <sighs> uh, well, I just lost my last jig, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna give up on it quite yet. The fishing has been absolutely terrible today. Um, so I'm surprised I even caught that many fish to begin with on this thing. Wish I would've landed a couple more of them earlier. I lost a bite or two, broke one off, lost another one. I think it's a solid jig that could work really, really well for smallmouth. If you wanna see the video on how to make it, leave a comment down below. If you wanna see my favorite largemouth fishing jig, check this one out right here. I'll be putting this guy back to the test again in the spring up on Lake Erie, using it as like a goby imitator. So hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.